You know the weird thing about swordfish? No. Their eyes are the size of grapefruits. Swordfish and sailfish, eyes the size of grapefruits. And they've evolved countercurrent heat exchangers in their body that run warm blood to their eyeballs so that their eyeballs function more efficiently in the cold water in which they hunt. But what do they taste like? I don't know. Some guy got speared by one once. He died. <laughs> And welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the show where we like to extend the nerdy conversation around the Because Science topics that we get way too complicated on sometimes. I'm Kyle Hill, the sense maker. It's like the men, it's like Mentos, but with pop culture and, and science. Every week on this show, I take your comments, questions, and concerns and from the previous episodes of Because Science and address them right here so that we can all get smarter. And I definitely need to get smarter because, honestly, yesterday, I thought Foghorn Leghorn and Rooster Cogburn were the same character. So on the last episode of Because Science, I challenged you by saying, I don't think you want super strength. Super strength is one of the oldest and most well-known superpowers in human history. But if you consider the physical ramifications of being that strong, I don't think that you would want it. I said, I said that performing everyday tasks would be a major pain, that saving people wouldn't go nearly as well as you think it would, and if you were fighting another super being, you'd probably punch through them or punch yourself into the ground, both of which are lame. But what did you have to say? Uh, our first comment comes from Philip Romar, who says, what if you was much heavier? Would you still be pushed back by punching him? So what Philip is saying is getting at Newton's third law. If you were a super being and you punched another super being, I said that equal and opposite forces would throw both of you across the room in equal and opposite directions. <laughs> yeah, but if you were heavier, would you still be pushed back as much? No, you wouldn't be. Because forces act on your mass to accelerate that mass, force equals mass times acceleration. If you have more mass and you apply the same force, you will be accelerated less. So if the Hulk punched you, you would fly backwards faster than the Hulk would because it has so much more mass. But if you are the same, say Superman versus Bizarro Superman, and you punched each other, same acceleration going backwards. Our next comment comes from Patrick Bussler, who says, guess wiping would require carbon nanotube toilet paper. Could Superman generate considerable upward thrust with his poop? Hashtag poop rocket. Yeah, Superman could fully cancel out his weight if he pooped an average poop that came out of his body in a tenth of a second at Mach 1.5. Faster than that or more poo than that, and he's going up. Uh, why'd you make me do that? I know why. It's because I... Our next comment comes from Sean Archilta, who says, Hey Kyle, just want to say I'm a big fan of yours, and I also got my niece, Brooklyn, hooked on Because Science. She is seven and watches your videos every chance she gets. If you could, on one of your videos, give her a shout out. It would make her day. Thanks. Well... I'm going to do you one better because I don't think a, a shout out is enough. Um, hi, Brooklyn. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the silliness that we get up to. Uh, today, on the day that we are filming, is International Women's Day. And I want to be completely straight with you, Brooklyn. If you are interested in science, and if you have any inklings of wanting to go into science when you get older, I think you should do so. But you should know that when you do that, a lot of people are gonna stand in your way. They're gonna tell you that little girls like you shouldn't get into science, that you should do something else, that you shouldn't do math or engineering or computer science. And I wanna tell you that those people are so, so wrong. You are exactly who we need going into science and engineering and technology and math. And if you want to help us figure out how the universe works, don't let anyone get in your way. And don't let anyone tell you that they don't believe in you because of who you are. Because I bet, Brooklyn, that you would prove them so wrong. 
So, stay nerdy. I'm gonna do some multi-comments because there's a lot of people saying the same things uh, because I guess I was super wrong. But our next comment comes from uh, Guilliam Arth. Nice, sounds like you're a sword maker. <laughs> who says, you're right, but this video doesn't apply to Neo, Neo from the Matrix. He has no super strength, he bends the laws of physics, so Newton's law don't apply to him, and he can punch through a wall without feeling the direction of the force, right? Uh, sure, and Neo can bend the laws of physics around himself, but watch this scene from the Matrix Revolutions. They actually get some of what I was saying right. When Mr. Smith and Neo punch themselves in the, punch each other, <laughs> Uh, punch the, each other in the rain, they actually both fly backwards right after that reaction, which is exactly what would happen if all of the force was being perfectly transmitted from their fists into their bodies and propelling them backwards. However, as Eric Franco points out, that is only if the force is perfectly transferred back into your body. If it's going into your arm, and your arm isn't super dense and super strong, like I said at the end of last week's episode, then your arm is gonna break. That's what the reaction force is gonna be. But if it all went into you, you would fly backwards like in the Matrix. Totally right. Next comment is another multi-comment, which comes from Ace Rumble, Mark French, and Richard Vaughn, 1999, who point out that when I said that living with super strength would be a huge hassle, it's kind of like what Superman said when he gave a speech to Darkseid, that you can see right here, where he described living like living in a world made out of cardboard. He has to be so careful because every moment of every day, if he slips up, if he uses his strength incorrectly or he misuses it, someone could die. That's what he says in the speech. And that's exactly my point. If you had such tremendous strength that you could punch dark side through buildings and across town, then it would be like you were living in a world of cardboard. So much less cool than you'd expect if you just said, oh, I want super strength. No, you'd have to spend every moment of every day worrying that if you were gonna high five someone, you might implode them. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound not fun, but it's not as fun. Our next comment comes from Rue Rose, who says, how dense would your bones and your body need to be to not pulpify, oh, I like that word a lot, Pulp pulpify, <laughs> when you Hulk smash Iron Man's standard gold titanium alloy suit? Would having super dense bones help at all? Blah, blah, blah. Rue, you are absolutely right. As I said at the very end of the episode on super strength, if you did not also have super durability, super density, then your body is gonna smush itself when it applies that much force to something, like a wall or a bad guy. You would have to be denser. Let, let's, let's be very generous. There are, there are cases where you could completely calculate this, but it's, it's too complicated. So, general rule of thumb, the thing that you are punching through, you want to be more dense than that if you want to bury yourself in it. This is kind of like the momentum considerations that we did in the Vibranium Meteorite episode, where we said if you're going really, really fast, you will bury yourself in an object based on the ratio of the densities. So the more dense the impactor is, the further it will go into something. So as a general rule, unless you were super dense, here, yes, punching a wall would destroy your fist rather than carry it, carry it through. You're so right. Oh, I love BSing, Kyle. I hope you get into some game theory stuff as well. Your catchphrase is way better than MatPat's. <laughs> but that's just a theory. My theory. I have several ca classic catchphrases, much like, Ho, oh, what? And you got of me, you... Muim says, question. What superpower would you want if you were a superhero, Kyle? It's hard for me to say my own name. Or are you villain? Um, I haven't sorted the hero villain thing out yet. But I would like to teleport. You know why? Flying is cool. You're not flying when you're, te uh, I would like to teleport because I want to check if there's other life in the universe. I want to be. I want to instantaneously appear and disappear anywhere. I know it's not possible, but 
if it were possible, I would want to do that. But you don't want to see the, the journey? No, I don't want to see a journey through space. Space is so empty. When they flew through the asteroid field in Star Wars, those asteroids should be thousands and thousands of kilometers apart. Space is the ultimate nothing. It is boring. I just want to get there. Get me to Titan. Get me underneath that ice. Let me see some little swimmy boys. <laughs> don't, don't let me name new species. Silly boys. Yeah. Uh, boys. I present to you a new species of fire ant, a spicy boy. Our last comment comes from Murky Wonders, who says, but Kyle, who? Why is your avatar my face? So the best comment this week, I am giving to Rue Rose. Very well thought out response. You know what I like about it is that you are taking information presented to you and taking it to another tier of explanation. If everything that we've gone through is possible or true or I'm on the right track, then what would this mean or what would that mean? You're thinking that's going beyond just, uh, what's that pyramid? It's going beyond just like memorization into synthesis. I appreciate that. So Rue Rose, congratulations, you are a super nerd. But of course, I am not always right. I do my best, but I only have so much time during the week and so much knowledge, and I'm not a smart boy like Isaac Newton. He invented calculus at 26. I'm 29 almost this month. So our first correction comes from a couple of people, another multi-comment, because I was super wrong about something. Max Sonke coops for the win, and Nailnor all say that what I got wrong is that a superhero with super strength, like Superman, super, 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 could control his strength so that it wouldn't be a problem. This is the living, with card, uh, living in a world of cardboard scenario. And I agree. I agree that people and superheroes could learn to delicately control their strength. It's not like they would forever be ripping doorknobs off of doors. They might when they first get their powers, sure, kind of like I said, but they wouldn't live their whole lives like that. But if you had to change your entire life around for the rest of your life just to live in a world that wasn't built for you, that's kind of my point. It's a huge hassle. If the end, the only time you could only let loose, so to speak, when you did that, it still wouldn't go according to plan. If you tried to punch someone into the sun, you'd be punched into the ground, and it's not nearly as cool. That's, that's my point with this. I don't know if you'd want super strength, because if you think of the ramifications, they're different than you see in pop culture and movies. So yes, you could control your strength, in theory, but it adds a layer of complexity and annoyance that I don't think we always think about. Would you want it? Do you really want to? Strength forever. Oh, <laughs> coming close to lawsuits all day, every day. Our next comment comes from Nogata Gaming, who says, I can't help but cringe. When you punch Superman into the sun. Of all the things you could do to Superman, punching him into his power source only makes him stronger. <laughs> Which is such a good point. I didn't even think about that. That's like punching Popeye into a pile of spinach. It's like, oh, oh no, <laughs> big mistake. That's like punching Spider-Man into a pile of spiders. <laughs> Never do that. It's a spidey boy. He's a little spidey boy. That's what he likes. You're welcome. Charles, we get it. Spidey life has a lot of views. Good correction, didn't even think about it. I'd be a bad supervillain. Next correction comes from Jamie Wilson who says, if I were to punch someone across the room, wouldn't the reaction be applied to my arm? And that being that I have super strength, wouldn't I have enough strength to stop the force applied to my arm? Oh, by the way, love the show. Hey, thanks. No. So equal and opposite forces mean equal and opposite forces. You, you can't just cancel these out. So if I were to punch at you and the force comes into me and I use my super muscles to brace that force, what was that muscle bracing against? 
And you can go through this exercise, but basically, there's a flow of, you learn this in engineering school, for example, there's a flow of force. If you're building a building and you put a weight on top of a building, that force acts on the ceiling, yes, but it flows through the rest of the building and eventually to the ground. So if you were punching something, that force is gonna flow through your arm, even if you were bracing yourself, and then it has to go somewhere. It's linking to the rest of your body. And it, it's either going into your feet, where friction comes into play, or it's just acting on you going out this way. And that's what forces you backwards. So no, even if you had super muscles and you punch something, you still, unless you're against a wall, something other than you has to brace it. Seems like a lot of mechanics or car enthusiasts have a problem with what I said. Stefan Chemilnik and Barry Bend and Jack Cutforth, who, master of the seven fleets, all have a problem with what I said, that it would be hard, if not impossible, if not annoying, to lift up a car over your head. Because if you picked up a car, it would either bend because of the pressure that you're putting on the car, or you would puncture the car with your hand and your super fists. Everyone is saying, especially one guy who said, I don't, I don't know, it's obviously I don't know how to jack. Because if you use a car jack, this is an example of putting a, a, a pressure point in a specific place in the car, and the car is designed to take that pressure, and it will not bend. If you take your car to a mechanic and they raise it up, they're raising it up on specific points of the frame, which are made to be very strong, and then the car wouldn't bend, or else taking your car to the mechanic would be more hassle than it's worth, which it is sometimes. But if you're picking up a car like Superman does in Action Comics number one, which is a million dollars. If you picked it up at points right on the frame, then the car would probably be fine. But if you picked it up at any other place where it's not meant to handle those pressures, the car is not gonna act like you expect it to. It is not as easy as just lifting a car over your head. Something worse is going to happen because of the pressures that you are applying to it. It's not that I didn't consider how you're jacking. I just, no? Okay. But think about it. Would your first instinct as a hero be to grab a car by the jack up points? I mean, if you learned to do that with every car you save, but if you didn't have a lot of time and I just gave you super strength, would you run up to it and grab it perfectly where it's supposed to be? No, you'd probably try to lift it up like you were lifting up, you know, a mattress. And that would mess the car up. That's my point. Always thinking about I'm sorry, mechanics, if I got on your nerves, but if you pick up a car like superheroes do, it's not gonna go according to plan. Our next comment comes from Merrick Pasteric, kinda like saying it out loud, who says, well, but we punch each other all the time and the punched usually goes while the punch sure stays at the same spot. Does it, do they? I've never actually seen a case where someone isn't faking, where someone punches another person so hard in real life that they fly backwards like you see in movies. You can't fool the universe. You can't get around physics. If you are punching so someone hard enough to throw them across the room and into a wall, and they're in the air the whole time, you're breaking your arm or you're doing something backwards the other way. It's. I've seen martial artists fake it. Like in demonstrations, they punch someone and that person goes Aah! and falls on their back, but it's theatrics. Which is again my point, you have to really exaggerate and sell it or else physics gets ya. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. And our last correction comes from Horst Dürr the second. Captain of the North, who says, that you would break the glass you were writing on with your super strength is unrealistic. You would rather destroy your markers or at least push the marker tips into the markers and don't just tell me that was for comedic effect. Oh, you mean when I did this in the episode? Yeah, yeah, I wrote that completely for comedic effect and you're right, the markers would break pro No. For the glass? 
The marker would break. I can't put, I couldn't push that marker hard enough. If I was pushing hard enough on whatever I'm writing on, if I'm even writing, then yes, the mark, something would happen to the marker first before whatever that thing was, probably. In theory, maybe. You're right. And it was just comedic. Was it, was it funny? So the best correction this week I'm giving to Norgarda Gaming. You're absolutely right, thinking outside the box. Taking little details and thinking way too hard about them. If I punch Superman in the sun, that would just make him stronger. Why? I'm not sure. Photosynthesis stuff? Anyway, great correction, you are a super nerd. <laughs> Now, if you are subscribed to Alpha, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is gonna be because you got it two days earlier than everyone else and you, you saw it by this time. But if you haven't subscribed to projectalpha.com yet, you are in for a treat because the next episode of Because Science is about... Pacific Rim. That's right, we are jumping into the breach and trying to figure out why piloting a Pacific Rim Jaeger takes two brains. Now, full disclosure, Legendary, the company that makes the movie, owns Nerdist and owns me, technically, and they asked me to do this episode, but it's still a lot of fun. I like the Pacific Rim universe quite a bit. Guillermo del Toro's uh, Academy Award-winning mind created a very fun little monsterverse with Pacific Rim, so I was happy to jump into the breach with him and all of the, the little coolness. And so we are trying to figure out why you need two synchronized people inside of a Jaeger's head to make it work. The movie universe says that there's too much of a neural load just for one pilot, which seems to indicate to me there is a very good reason to have two brains in a Jaeger instead of just one. But for that answer, you'll have to wait for a little bit more time, days, soon. So go watch the last episode of Because Science if you haven't yet and let me know what you think. Leave me your comments, corrections, and questions. Yep, that's all three. At Because Science on Instagram and Twitter and youtube.com slash because science and facebook.com slash because science and I will go check those and get in early because comment sections close pretty soon after the videos get posted because I gotta film this. And remember, blood is thicker than water because it's non-Newtonian and it depends on the amount of pressure you apply to it. Blood actually gets thinner the harder you push on it. Weird, right? It's kind of like ketchup. Remember, like blood, ketchup doesn't want to be in your veins. Wait, no, blood wants that. Like blood, Water isn't ketchup. <laughs> Wait. Blood is non newton Oh, so much Newtonian. Smart boy did a little bit of everything, didn't he? Blood is thicker than water, but not as refreshing. It's also non Newtonian. Brackets. Blood is thicker than water, meaning that familial ties are thicker than, I guess, your connectedness through the necessity of drinking water? Water? Look, blood. blood is thicker than water. But blood is water. Blood isn't all water. Wait, blood is thicker than water, and like blood, it also... Uh, forget it. 